Hey there, thanks for tuning into Duck Bricks. I'm Chris, and today we have a review of a special BrickLink AFOL designer program set, and that is the Cockapel. Now, Bionicle fans are very familiar with this particular bird because the model actually beat out Sakoda's Bionicle Legends. It was faster to be pre-ordered than Bionicle by a long shot, by a pretty wide margin. It was kind of funny how this like absolutely obliterated the Bionicle set, but I want to do a review of it because it is a really nice and charming Lego build. We don't get a lot of large-scale Lego bird builds outside of the Lego Hub Bird set from the Lego um, employee gift stuff that they got in like 2014, I think, or 2013. We also got a Lego Ideas Bird set, but we haven't really gotten something quite as big as this, where you can see the Kakapo and a baby Kakapo up there. For some background on the Kakapo, it is a flightless species of bird native to New Zealand. It is actually endangered, so it's really cool how it has representation in a Lego set so people can support getting the bird to not be endangered anymore. It was a pretty fun build, lots of texture stuff, a little repetitive, but fun overall. And let's get into the review right now. Okay, so here we have the Kakapo. This was part of the BrickLink AFOL designer program, set number 910017. It was available for purchase for only about a day back around a couple of years ago when BrickLink was doing its crowdfunding program for the first round, retailing for 80 US dollars. This comes with 1,063 parts, giving it a pretty good price per part ratio, although again, a lot of those parts are just little details here and there, like the little one-by-one -one curved pieces or a lot of little slopes. The Kakapo, kind of the origin behind the set, is that this is depicting an endangered bird species. When it first was kind of released as a LEGO Ideas proposal, the bird species was a little bit lower than it is right now, which is actually really good thanks to conservation efforts. The Kakapo is native to New Zealand, and it is from the Maori language, which kind of combines two different words, so it's kind of interesting to see where the naming of the bird came from. I believe Kaka is parrot and Po is knight, so this is the knight parrot. The Kakapo build also comes with two Two different hats which can be swapped in and out of the head itself and is actually pretty poseable in terms of the wings which we're about to take a look at. Now of course those in the Bionicle community know this one very well because this was actually kind of competing with the legend of the Bionicle set in terms of what was going to be made into an actual set. I, I say competing, but I mean it wasn't really this This kind of blasted Legend of Bionicle out of the water in terms of getting enough support and crowdfunding votes to be made into a set, but it's always kind of funny to see folks mention this in the Bionicle community, but on its own, this is a really good model, and that's why I want to kind of share about it in the review right now. We'll set the two fun hats aside and the baby version as well, which is a really fun build, and take a look at the Kakapo itself. Now, this has more than double the pieces of the original idea submission. It is really big, and it is very, very detailed. It's probably the most detailed bird that LEGO has done to date. The wings are fully poseable, so you can move them up and down pretty much any angle that you want, and they are on a ratchet joint. Unfortunately, they do tend to kind of fall off very easily. They are really only attached by just a few studs, like six studs on either side, or so three on either side, so six in total. So you do have to be careful with it. I wouldn't recommend playing around with it too, too much. But as long as you keep it pretty closed up or just don't touch it too much, they're not going to fall off too often. There doesn't seem to have been really any easier way to make sure the wings actually attached on a little bit better than this. The original submission had them really tightly attached on, but given the much larger scale of this final build, it was a lot harder to do so. Now, the back feathers can be moved around quite nicely as well, so you can pivot these up and down, and you can actually rotate these back and forth, so you can move them around like so. The feet do not move, but they are essentially made to basically have a firm base, other than being able to rotate them around a little bit. I mean, you can kind of bend them around just ever so slightly, but they're not really meant to be because obviously the way that they're set up is that these are pretty flush next to each other in terms of the Technic attachments, so you can bend them outwards a little bit, but that's stretching things a little bit too much. Now, this was a really fun model to put together, despite the fact that basically both of these sides are symmetrical, so you have a pretty symmetrical build for this type of bird here. It was a really fun one because there was just a lot of extra detailing and layering when you were putting together the body. Let me see if I can remove certain segments of it just so you can kind of see what's going on under the hood here. Like, for example, taking off this bit of the head, you can see that a lot of it is studs on the side construction 
construction. So you have some upside down builds here and then you've got this whole piece that kind of slots in on the side. Everything here is attached on the side and it was just a really interesting thing to put together unlike really any other Lego build because again this was part of the AFOL designer program which meant that designers actually had the chance to make their mocks a actual Lego set in reality although it doesn't actually come under the kind of very strict guidelines that typical Lego sets go under so didn't oh there goes the wing again so it didn't go under that much testing and review compared to a lot of the other Lego sets that are currently released today but it's still really cool that a fan designer was able to just basically have this translated one-to-one -one from an original creation into an official Lego build and having it be this sturdy everything is really sturdy about it just the wings just keep popping off now one fun thing is that in the head here again as you can see if you kind of tilt it upside down let me see if we can get this out here. You kind of have to shake it a little bit, but this is not attached in any way, shape, or form. There's just an empty groove here, and that is intentional because you can remove this little bit and place either the party hat on top so you can have the kakapo celebrating like so. That is a really cute look. I really do like how he looks with the hat there. And of course, you can have it with the top hat as well, which is... Just very funny to be able to put the different hats on the bird. I think I'll probably be displaying it with one of the hats on because it just looks really good with the hat. I think it just adds a little bit of extra flavor to the model and makes it kind of stand out from other bird builds. But of course, if you don't want to use them, you do have these special bricks that you can place in the head and close it up. Now, the thing with these sets is that they were packaged by BrickLink, the pieces were made by LEGO, but they did not have any physical instructions, all of the instructions were digital, thankfully BrickLink released PDF instructions and did not have to make you use LEGO's instruction app, which honestly, in my opinion, is not that great. Now the thing is, because it is a BrickLink kind of oriented set, it doesn't really go through the same exact quality control guidelines as LEGO, so there are a lot of pieces where, for example, the parts for these two kind of head pieces up at the top here were first kind of included in bag three but were never used until the final few steps of the instructions around bag eight there were parts that were supposed to be built as part of like bag six or something like that but they didn't actually come until bag seven there were a lot of spare parts a lot more than usual and that is a result of these sets essentially kind of being hand-picked hand-drawn and kind of just designed and made by the bricklink staff team instead of by lego's own quality control departments and factories which is an interesting way of setting it up but for a very limited release I guess it's kind of it makes sense to have errors like these it was just very odd seeing certain parts just be in the wrong bags because I think it was actually a pretty common issue I saw some other reviews pointing that out so it's definitely something that was maybe just messed up during the process a lot of the sets face these same problems where you've got parts that are just randomly included in very early bags and aren't used until like five bags later so just kind of stuff like that you need to keep an eye out for Otherwise, though, the build itself was a really fun one, and yeah, it does get a little bit repetitive. It is a fairly simple build, all things considered. If you kind of look at it, it's really just got kind of studs on the side here, studs on either side. It's just kind of a studs on the side build in general, but once you kind of get the hang of it, you can get into a flow of building it. It is easily the largest and most articulatable, and I guess kind of the most detailed bird that LEGO has ever done. Previously, they did the LEGO Ideas Birds set, which featured much smaller birds, as well as an employee gift set, which was kind of to the scale of the LEGO Ideas Bird set, came out that same year. So they've done those before, but this is kind of the only one where they've done a really big one. But honestly, I think one of the highlights of the set for me is the baby one right here. I just really like the look and feel of this. It's really cute. You can even move the tail up and down. This one actually can move the legs, so that is a really fun one to kind of have it walking along. You can readjust the position of the wings, and this is just a fun little side build to complete the main build of the Kakapo. But with that, that's pretty much all I have to say about this bird. It is really cute. I do like birds because the channel is, of course, called Duck Brick, so I'm happy to add this to my collection. And that is finally summing up all of our round one BrickLink AFL Designer Program reviews. We've already put out, I believe, a couple on round two. I still have to build the rest of round two, and I am waiting on round three to get here, so... I don't think those are coming for many, many more months, at least for me, because pre-orders just take forever to get here for these. I think it takes like a year and a half for these sets to ship, if not more, so I will be waiting on them, but this is still a really nice build. The final thing I do want to talk about is the value for 80 US dollars, which was the price that it retailed at when it was first available for sale. It does feel like for what you paid for, this is really small. I mean, this, this is a small build. I can hold it in, in one hand here. 
but it is really, really heavy. There were a lot of pieces used towards the individual detailing of each one of the dots on the feathers and these little pieces here and there where $80 honestly feels like for the amount of pieces you're getting a fairly good deal. Sure, I think in terms of the volume of stuff, this feels closer to say 50 or 60, but given the amount of pieces, over a thousand parts, $80 is actually pretty good. And yeah, a lot of those parts are small, but it's still not quite as small as something like say a full on dot set. So I think this kind of toes the line between being okay value for what it is. All right, and with that, we have summed up our review of the special AFOL designer program set. That was the Kakapo. And yeah, it's really cool how LEGO are making sets based off of fan designs. I think that's a really great initiative. They're launching a full round of it again. So they're actually continuing to do this. I hope this lasts into the future, making official sets made directly by LEGO fans, not even with LEGO ideas where people submit ideas, but LEGO designers are the ones to finally make them. These sets were finally made by fan designers. LEGO designers didn't actually touch these, so really cool seeing this initiative. I hope it continues. It looks like it is continuing, so that's great. I hope it continues to be successful. And yeah, that was our review of the Kakapo. Thank you so much for tuning into Duck Bricks. Like and subscribe for even more LEGO news, reviews, discussion, and analyses coming away very soon. And check us out on Twitch for live LEGO building streams, special LEGO city building setups, a whole host of fun LEGO games, and stuff with friends. It's a great time. I hope you join us there in the description below. Thanks all for tuning in, and bye for now.